The Cholera bacteria is central to the story of Subnautica, causing mass extinction of the planet's life and said to have killed over 143 billion individuals over countless architect-controlled star systems. But what would it actually be like to be infected with Cholera? Let's step into a survivor's shoes and really find out. You're living your best life in 45-46 BCs. You've set up your first base, picked armfuls of lantern fruit and are settling in for the long haul. There might be a few unpleasant neighbours around with an interesting way of saying hello, but if if you keep your grass nice and trim and that white picket fence sparkling, I'm sure you can win them over. This ocean living thing isn't so bad. It's quiet, but you can make it work. Who needs to make it back to civilization anyway? And going by the planet's track record, you'll probably be greeted by some new friends quite soon. Everything seems to be going just fine, but this is a lie. While paddling around in the ocean, you have come into contact with a tiny enemy, one so small it couldn't even be seen. And unfortunately, this one can't be won over with some neighborly love or cookies, this is much more insidious. What you couldn't see was a microscopic water-bound bacteria that was patiently waiting for its next host, and unfortunately for you, it's found it. Maybe you ate a peeper with a few strange green spots. I mean, how were you supposed to know those weren't some kind of alien vitamins? Or maybe you just breathed it in. You did trip and get a mouthful of seawater the other day over by the floating island, or most horrifying of all, maybe you didn't make any mistakes. The bacteria seems to have the ability to directly penetrate your skin, and not even even your dive suit has managed to protect you. Your skin is evolved to keep out microorganisms and other hazardous materials, designed to give you a layer of protection against the outside world and stop things attaching themselves to your internal organs, as that can be quite inconvenient. But this completely new threat seems to have found a way to bypass your defences and enter your body. However the bacteria got inside is now irrelevant, it has now entered your bloodstream and is making friends with your cells. And when I say making friends, I mean giving them a forcible hug and not letting go slowly corrupting and mutating them to work towards the bacteria's goals. And if having just a couple of these bacteria inside you was bad, they now start to multiply at an alarming rate. Kara has arrived and its incubation period has now started. You just don't know it yet. As you spend more time getting used to your new ocean life, you start to take some liberties. You make some strange exotic cocktails out of the planet's alien fruits. A deck chair on the beach, perhaps. You're starting to think that you actually crashed in a secret paradise. Maybe you should just stay here for a while longer. It's not like anyone will be looking for you just yet, they probably don't even know that you're missing. You lay your head down on your pillow after another day in paradise. What a time to be alive. You awake the next morning to a throbbing in your head unlike anything you've ever experienced before. But maybe you just had one too many lantern fruit lattes yesterday. I'm sure a quick swim will sort you out. But what you didn't realise was that as time passed, the bacteria in your bloodstream continued to multiply, and until now, you were blissfully unaware of this silent invasion. But now the bacteria Area's numbers have hit critical mass, and your body has started to take notice of this new invader. It's activated the immune system and declared all-out war in order to protect you from this unknown threat. As the day progresses, the pain in your head gets worse. You didn't even think that was possible with it being so bad already, but there's a first time for everything. But the headache is now the least of your concerns. You now start to experience debilitating flu-like symptoms. Coughing. Fatigue. Is it hotter out here today, or do you have a fever? You barely have the strength to make it back to your shelter, let alone climb the mountain you were bounding up just days before. Water is all your throat can handle now. It's so painful you just can't face the thought of one of your fruit smoothies. As you slump into your chair, you're finding it harder to concentrate. In fact, you feel a bit itchy. Are those small green spots on your skin? Many of the flu-like symptoms you are now experiencing are brought on by your immune system during its fight with the infection rather than the bacteria itself. While your immune system is a strong opponent, Kara is unlike any infection previously discovered in human history, and that puts you at a serious disadvantage. When our immune system encounters a disease for the first time, it records information for the future to help it fight the problem should it ever return. This information is passed on through the generations, so if your ancestors encountered a disease, your body has a much easier time fighting it off today, as it has some idea of what it's dealing with. But with Kara, it has no idea, and that's not time you have to waste. As you begin to spend more and more time confined to your bed, the bacteria continues to multiply in your system. Unseen networks of bacteria are now starting to link together throughout your body, rapidly increasing the speed at which your cells begin to mutate. Your immune system continues to fight, but it's starting to get overwhelmed. These mutated cells are what are forming the glowing green lesions on your skin and in your veins, with the spots growing ever larger and brighter as the infection takes a stronger hold on your body. Any cells that are lucky enough not to be mutated are broken down and absorbed by the bacteria to fuel its war 
effort, depriving you of vital bodily functions. After spending days doing the bare minimum to ensure your survival, you suddenly feel a surge of energy inside you. Maybe you're finally starting to overcome the infection and get back to normal. No, wait, you don't feel better at all. You just feel angry, really angry, and you decide to take your frustration out on the nearby vending machine. You're not sure that was very productive, but hey, you sure showed him. Who was he to keep all those sweet treats hidden behind that glass from you anyway? It seems the infection can cause an increase in aggressive behaviour. The biting fever and throbbing headaches in combination with cell mutation could be enough to drive you mad. Maybe that's why you decided to destroy the vending machine. But you're not mad. Don't be so ridiculous. And anyway, he deserved it. It's a good job you're alone in here, as living in an underwater habitat with other people and plenty of sharp objects would be a recipe for disaster right now. But while you might think this is the nightmare scenario, things are about to get a whole lot worse. As when 4546B comes to play, it doesn't hold back, and the physical and mental symptoms of your current predicament are not the only thing you have to worry about. You peer out of the window to see a strange purple biomechanical life form sporting two large claws. This Frankenstein's monster is the result of splicing together a number of unknown creatures, copious amounts of mechanical body parts, and some of 4546B's native life forms. With this finely balanced mix designed to make the perfect hunter of any one or anything that has the misfortune to be infected with Kara. From the moment you became infected, you became a target, and now it's found you. The alien race that was studying Kara, known as the Architects, were pretty strict about their quarantine procedures, so they created the Warpers to dispose of anything infected on the planet in order to stop the disease from spreading. While peering at the creature, it seems to disappear into thin air. Where did it go? Are you starting to see things? Moments later, it reappears at the other end of your base. It seems the creature also has the ability to teleport, but hopefully you should be safe in here as long as you don't go outside right? You don't have much desire to go out in your current state anyway, so that monster can sit there for as long as it likes. Let it waste its battery. Besides, the coffee maker sprouting legs and arms and trying to kill you in your sleep seems like the much more pressing concern right now. You spend the next few hours drifting in and out of consciousness. Dripping in sweat and tortured by nightmares, it's hard to say what's real and what isn't. But you think the tapping on the glass is definitely happening. The creature still hasn't left you alone, and it seems to get some kind of twisted fun out of smashing its claws against your shelter. Not that you particularly care, you've long since stopped maintaining your picket fence. How long Kara actually takes to kill you seems to depend on the individual infected, with some survivors being more susceptible than others. Either way, we are now entering the end game. Your immune system can no longer cope with the level of bacteria and mutation within your body and begins to shut down. You now face one of two fates. With your immune system compromised, another common infection can enter your body unopposed and quickly finish off what Kara started. Or if you're unlucky, your body is now so severely mutated and compromised it can no longer complete basic functions needed to keep you alive, resulting in organ failure. As you lay back on your bed, you take one last look at the ocean, the room lit by a dim green glow which you can only assume is coming from your own body. Thankfully the machine that was tormenting you seems to have gone now. It must have decided that it no longer needed to wait. It knows what your fate will be. Left alone now in the silence, you think to yourself, isn't it ironic that the most dangerous killer didn't have the largest teeth or the biggest claws, but actually couldn't be seen at all. Now that got a little bit dark there, didn't it? But if you don't want this to be your fate, you'll need to watch this video next to learn all about Subnautica's Warpers. Trust me, you're going to need it. And special thanks to my patrons, Asmodeus, Mateus, and Graham Deloy for making this video possible.